I want to just mention a reproductive disease, um, which you need to also be aware of. I wanted to talk about um, this particular uh, virus here, which you know from dogs and cats, parvovirus being causing all sorts of problems. And many of you would have seen this on a number of occasions. But this is actually a reproductive virus in pigs. It's a very different virus. It doesn't cause diarrhea. It causes reproductive losses, very severe reproductive losses in pig farms. And you might know from your dogs and cats, it's a very hardy virus. It's a very tough, small virus. It sits around for a long time. It's very difficult to get rid of, makes control very difficult. Um, it was identified as a problem in the 70s and early 80s, and it's now found everywhere in pigs. And it can be devastating. It can cause large impact on herd uh, productivity because what does it do? It causes mummified pigs. Uh, it, it results in, in, in reproductive losses, mummified pigs, and small litter sizes. But the thing about, the thing about uh, parvovirus is it's very, very easy to control. And in the Caribbean, this virus is likely to be present. You may not be vaccinating against it, but if your farmers are saying that they have, you ha you're seeing reproductive problems uh, with, uh, uh, and, and they're saying what could be causing it, and they're not vaccinating, because I know in the Caribbean people don't vaccinate their pigs very much. Um, that, mi that might not be the case everywhere, but parvovirus is definitely um, uh, one that you need to be aware of. How's it transmitted? Well, very, very easily as well. Although it doesn't cause so much diarrhea, it causes a lot of, it has a lot of virus in the feces, but it's also in oral and nasal secretions, um, and it can be transmitted by semen and transplacentally. Um, so what do you see? You see clinical signs, you see early embryonic death, you see all these similar sort of things you saw for, we saw for PRRS. Very similar mummification, small litter sizes, neonatal deaths. Okay, so that so and what it depends on when the 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 the, the pig is infected during the gestation period. Um, if if it's early on in gestation, um, you see tend to see resorption of the fetus. If it's between 30 and 70 days, you see death of the fetus and abortion. If it's after 70 days, usually the fetus is immunocompetent. Its immune system is all right. So it survives uh, quite happily. Um, and when you see, I get infection of non-pregnant adults, you don't see anything, yeah? So what you're looking for, what you're looking for is, is, is a reproductive issues in your pig herd. You're not vaccinated against parvovirus. Think about parvovirus. It will, may well be causing the problem. Um, uh, how do you get, what do you get samples from? Fairly straightforward again, from your aborted fetus. Um, and what do you do? The same array of tests that we've talked about, many of us have talked about, um, and there are serological tests as well. But you have to be careful because quite a few countries do vaccinate, and if you vaccinate, you get antibodies, yeah? Um, how do you prevent? Critically, there are good vaccines out there. There are very good vaccines out there, and you need to have, uh, to, you need to vaccinate you need to vaccinate your sows before they get pregnant, so then they don't abort, yeah? And some people go in for controlled infection of gilts. So we've talked about that a little bit earlier. Some people, you, you feed mummified fetuses or, or placenta uh, to the pigs and you infect them, but at a time when they're not gonna show clinical signs, yeah? Uh, you see a long level of passive immunity, up to six, mo uh, 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 up to six months, uh, with the colostral antibody. So that brings in problems because many of you will know about these colostral antibodies. They sometimes interfere with vaccination, yeah? Um, so you have to give the vaccination after the colostral antibodies have gone down. Otherwise, the vaccine doesn't work, yeah? So when it's quite a long level here, you have to vaccinate the gilt after this, so around six to seven months. And that's a pretty short window in pigs. Uh, because um, you, you, you're beginning to get, want to get, um, get them into the mating cycles at that stage. So what do you do? You need herd immunity management. You need to ensure females are immune prior to mating. So you vaccinate them two times um, uh, prior to mating. Um, avoid, so you, you avoid the maternal immunity. So first vaccine at guilt selection um, and, sec and, and, and second vaccine when they're selected for mating, yeah? And remember the boars as well, because they're very important. They can transmit it. Um, so 
for ongoing immunity, vaccinate sows at each reproductive cycle, revaccinated at bores every six months, ensure the vaccine quality is maintained, etc. Good refrigeration uh, and watch your expiry dates. Some people who don't want to vaccinate, as I said, will use natural exposure. Not really recommended, but you can expose your gilts to, to placenta and mummified fetuses prior to mating for the first time, i.e. mix it with the feeds, yeah? But there are issues. It's dirty. You're throwing the virus about, yeah? It's much better to use vaccination. So the key take-home message uh, for parvovirus is, 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 is it is around, and it's, it's likely to be in the Caribbean, very likely to be in the Caribbean, and if you do have problems, you, would, you, sh you should consider vaccinating or recommending vaccination.